Why does your mask smell like my feet? Pick up some Mask Bright today. Papper people, forgive the potato camera. I have to record this from my computer and it's inherently worse, but we're gonna be focusing primarily on Oscar data. Now, if you're using Sleep HQ, you could be using Sleep HQ data. Doesn't really matter. We're just looking at data today. This particular case has to do with a guy. Uh, he's a vet of our country. He fought for our nation. Uh, he's being seen by the VA. The VA was not handling his case very well, not to satisfaction. He was still reportedly extremely tired. So he came to me. He came to my company, AXG Sleep Diagnostics. We did a review with him, and let's take a look. Now, Sometimes people complain of me getting a little too technical on this, but I'm sorry. It is what it is. <laughs> I'll use that. It is what it is, whether it's technical or not. So we can look at this, and I'm looking at the flow rate. I can look at this, and we can all agree this doesn't look good. Before we get into this, we need to hear a quick word from the sponsor of this channel and the sponsor of this video, CPAPsupplies.com. Check out our sponsor, CPAPsupplies.com. Are you just a floating head? Do you find it easy to find CPAP equipment? No, you're just a floating head. You struggle to get masks on. You need to find specific products because you are just a floating head. CPAPsupplies.com has got help for you. Look, an Oracle doesn't really require headgear. You should be able to just bite into this thing, add it to your cart, and then we're gonna go ahead and view cart and our discount code lefty20. Oh boy. Oh yeah, you're, you're gonna need some help with that. Yeah, that's that's not working floating head. Let us help. Lefty20 gets us 20% off. We're not paying 75 bucks. We're gonna pay $60.40. Let CPAPsupplies.com be your partner in treating your sleep apnea. And that way, all you have to focus on is getting a restful night's sleep. Check out CPAPsupplies.com. All right, guys, we are back. Now, this is a severe bilevel titration of this vet. Um, we can all agree there's a lot of blue in here. Now, I don't trust usually what the machine is telling me it's seeing, but I do find those areas particularly interesting because I know something happened there. So this doesn't look good. We see a lot of obstructive apneas being tagged. It looks like there's some centrals being tagged in there as well. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This guy's on bi-level and he's on an EPAP of 17. It wasn't working for him. Let's take a look at what happens. So look at this data. We can tell this is just a hot mess. Back-to-back -back obstructive events. Hey, Jason. Excuse me, Jason. Jason. <laughs> How, no one's going to come to my company now and look for help. I'm, the immaturity level is just through the roof. What we see here is a slow decrease, slow decrease, a flattening, rapid increase. That is a prototypical poster child of obstructive sleep apnea. Slow decrease, rapid increase. As the airway is choking off, it completely chokes off, and then we gasp. <gasps> <sighs> Happens over and over again. Obstructive sleep apnea. Now let's talk about bi-level before we get into this too much. EPAP is at 17. EPAP is there to control for obstructive apneas. If you're still having obstructive apneas with whatever the EPAP setting is, that EPAP setting is too low. That needs to be raised up. And then the IPAP is used for things such as hypopneas, respiratory effort related arousals, snoring. In terms of Oscar data or sleep HQ data, hypopneas and reras are basically interchangeable. It's just think of it as a, a shallowing of breathing and then uh, you still wake up. So let's see if we can find one. This is all pre recorded, so I, I can't really do much with what I got here. I'll find one for you later or not, whatever. So he got in contact with me. The, these, the 18, he tried the 17 and 18 EPAP on his own. So he had a consultation with me, axgsleepdiagnostics.com. And what we did is we increased the EPAP to 20 as well as 21. Now this is one of the different settings we, we sampled and you can see visually it looks a heck of a lot better. It's a little flatter on top. We, we didn't have it completely resolved but I found it like very, very interesting. So check out this night. Well, now we do have a little trouble spot there and I believe that spot we're on right here, it looked like he was on his back. I think we decided he needs to stay off his back. Okay, so I, I mentioned hypopneas. A hypopnea is, we'll take this central apnea they, they tagged, stupid. So we see a slow decrease, 
rapid increase. So we know that this is obstructive in nature. Slow decrease, but they're still breathing, rapid increase. This, is, this would be categorized as a hypopnea. So we know that increasing the EPAP got rid of obstructive apneas. That's the whole point of it. Now we do see a short little obstructive apnea there. And this one is kind of close to being obstructive apnea, so we probably call that one obstructive apnea as well. But you can see there's a higher density of hypopneas that are present, which is good. It means that increasing from 17 to 18 EPAP up to 21 for an EPAP improved him. And that's what we're looking. We're looking for overall sleep consolidation. If we went back to the overall night, we can see that overall that's an improvement. So what we did is we made a tweak up to 22 and then we made some further tweaks to the IPAP. I don't have that data with me, but you can see the improvement in his overall sleep. It is much, much better. Here's another night. Looks looks great. Like right here was a position change from memory and then he changed back. So he's trying to stay on his side as a concerted effort. Then on this on this night, this is one of the later nights, we, we really discovered like, look, you stay on your side, you're golden. I made some suggestions as to keep his leak rate much, much lower. He did a great job with that. So fix the leaks, fix the pressure, although this, so we fixed the leaks. We were still working on the pressure, but you can see that the pressure is greatly improved. His breathing is so much better at night. He's feeling better. Um, so it was really, really great to work with a, a, a vet of our nation and uh, he wasn't doing well with the VA and he's well on his way to sleeping a lot better. But you can see bi-level titrations are much more difficult. His IPAP, we had to tweak a little bit and he's on a tremendous amount of pressure. So anyone who says, uh, uh, I'm on 10 now. It feels like it's too much. There, there's people that are much higher, um, and, and this wasn't even the highest this week. So if you're having a difficult time with your sleep, even if your apnea hypopnea index is reporting at one or lower, we can still help you out with lots of suggestions to help. In fact, I think a higher number, greater than 50% of the people we deal with have AHIs that are reported as really, really good, and we can definitely isolate spots that you're, you're having difficulties and make recommendations to improve that those spots. So hopefully you learned something from this. Now let's do something real quick. I wanna thank the sponsor of this channel again, cpapsupplies.com. Guys, support them. Use discount code LEFTY20 at checkout. Save yourself some money, but help out this channel as they are supporting us big time. We really appreciate that. I also wanna thank the sponsor of this channel via Patreon, all the Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you guys. Also, the YouTube members, really appreciate you guys. You guys all help out more than you know. People that use my Amazon affiliate link, whenever you're buying anything from Amazon at all and you use my affiliate link, I get a little loot and that really helps me out, helps me free up time to do this kind of stuff. I even appreciate all the guys that have used my Pillow Cube link. I still love the Pillow Cube, it's fantastic. My neck no longer hurts in the morning and I find that I'm sleeping much better with it. It's awesome. I'll do a little more on that later. So thank you for watching this educational video. I know it may be technical for some, but it, it, the information is what it is and it applies to some people. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna be getting back to making a lot more videos. I was, I was kind of spent the last week. I had zero time to put out any content. So this one, I've been, it's been burning a hole in my pocket and I have like two or three more that I'd really like to do. Kind of similar, similar to this one. All right guys, thanks for watching. Have a great night, bye. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy, to Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espelong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swearingen, Chung Chu Chen, and Edward Steiner, as well as a big thank you to all my other Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Little tiny thanks, buddy, for you guys.